Info Exchange. Let's do this. Info Exchange. This is where we at, everybody. This is where we at. Yes. Topics are not off limits as long as we enlighten and we educate. Info Exchange. The information that will keep us moving, that will keep us going, that will let us make it happen. There's a definitely a need for people to come out and express their knowledge. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abdiel Ben-Levin. Abdiel. Um, tonight, what I want to speak about is um, the esoteric language within the tour. Um, as I've been journeying uh, throughout the tour in the past 20 years, what I found is that most people who pick up the Torah uh, for the very first time, uh, our opinion of it is based upon, number one, an English uh, understanding of it, for lack of a better term, if you will. Uh, the only way to correctly understand the Torah or the teachings of the Bible is to understand it from the language that it was written in. If you cannot speak to uh, <clears throat> the text, by grasping the language that it was written in, you're a little bit lost in the translation, right? You have to study it from the original. Most people who believe to have uh, the view that the Bible is uh, inaccurate are usually people that have no clue about the language. The language is key. And I usually, when I'm speaking to people about the uh, Torah, one of the first things I find is that, first and foremost, they're deficient in the language. So for me, I make that a very big part of the way that I convey uh, my thoughts on the tour. Okay, uh, here we go. What we're looking at for most people who may or may not know, this is Hebrew. This is Genesis chapter one, uh, the original Hebrew in the tour, also including the, what's known as the Nebuchadnezzar, which is the vowels. So I'm gonna read Genesis chapter one really quick, and I'm gonna give a short uh, explanation of the first three verses. So the Torah begins, and by the way, anyone who opens the Torah for you and attempts to explain the Torah to you and does not give you an explanation that is in sync with the literal text, I'm here to tell you that person does not understand Torah, dare I say it. Again, you cannot understand the original intent of a speaker if you don't understand the language. Mm. Every language that you will go into, you'll find that when you try to come out that language, mm. the language you're trying to get into doesn't even have a word to coin the phrase or concept. Mm. Therefore, it's imperative for you to understand the original text. Mm. And this is the bestseller in everybody's uh, <clears throat> house, right? This has been the bestseller world over for how many years now, how many centuries now. So if that idea is important, it's even more important when it comes to this book, a book that is surrounded by so much controversy, so much passion, and so much uh, discussion of truth. So let me again just start right now by saying, I'll say it first in the English, and I'll read it second in the Hebrew. In the English, you can read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Hebrew, it reads, Bereshit bara Elohim et ha-shemayim ve'et ha-aretz. The first thing I'm going to draw your attention to is this. It's worded in Hebrew differently than you read it in English. For instance, when you read it in English, you're going to read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When the Hebrew literally says, be reshit, which means in the beginning, the be is a preposition in Hebrew, the letter be, what I'm pointing to right now. It means in or with. It alludes to the transcendence of God and the imminence of God how God both fills all worlds and surrounds us simultaneously at the same time. We refer to it as a divine paradox. The word reshit means beginning, or to start. It's related to the Hebrew word uh, reshona, which is one, and at the base is actually rosh, which is resh alef shin, which means head or beginning. So bereshit means in the beginning. The second word is bara, he created. So if you're paying attention, it actually reads different in Hebrew. It doesn't say, in the beginning, God created. It says, in the beginning, he created and was here. Are we paying attention? I'm going to read that again. Bereshit bara Elohim et ha-shemayim ve'et ha-aretz. 
I'm going to read it as it's literally read in Hebrew so that you can see the difference. In the beginning, he created Elohim, Aleph through Tav, Ha Shemayim, Wehem, Ha Aretz. Ha Shemayim is the heavens, and Ha Aretz is the earth. In the beginning, he created Elohim. Are we understanding what that means? I'm pretty sure none of us do. What do you mean in the beginning he created Elohim? Isn't Elohim the Hebrew word for God? Mm. Are you telling me God created God? Mm. No, I'm not telling you that. But what I'm pointing out to you is the idea that the word God is a title. Mm. And this title became manifest with creation. Before or prior to creation, there was no thing in existence but the Creator. The title or word Elohim is only applicable with the creation itself. So the title itself, or Elohim, was created with the advent of creation. The last letter of the word Bereshit is the Tav. The last letter of the word Bara, which is create, is the Aleph. The last letter of Elohim is the Mem. When you take Tav, Aleph, Mem, you spell perfection in Hebrew. We believe that God's word is perfect. The last letter of Bara is Aleph. The last letter of Elohim is Mem. The last letter of Em is Tav. In Hebrew, that spells Emet. He believes God's word is true. That's the Hebrew word for truth. Conversely, or ironically, the reverse of emet is ma'at. For anyone who doesn't know, ma'at is um, an Egyptian phrase that coins or uh, conceptualizes the idea of justice, truth, and righteousness. And if anyone is familiar with ancient languages on a whole, the first thing you'll notice is that ancient Hebrew is very similar with ancient Egyptian. And I'll prove that to you today. All right, let's get out there. So, in, again, in the original Hebrew, the first sentence of Genesis reads much different than how we understand it. And when you begin to learn how to read it, you begin to grasp the truth that it's trying to convey. First and foremost, the word Torah, contrary to popular opinion, does not mean law. When we speak of Torah, we're speaking about the Creator's teachings. The word Torah comes from the Hebrew verb hara, which means to teach. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the mountain that Abraham was bringing his son Isaac upon, if anyone's familiar with some of the biblical uh, stories, when Abraham was said to uh, prepare his son Isaac for sacrifice, the mountain that he brought him to was known as Mount Moriah in Hebrew. Uh, this word Moriah uh, means the mountain of teaching. Uh, this mountain was later to become the actual site where the Holy Temple of Jerusalem was laid. And we see that as a site where God's teaching emanates. For instance, Isaiah chapter 2 says, At the end of days, all nations shall flow to Jerusalem, and the law of God shall flow from Jerusalem at the end of days. So we always uh, equate that idea with that of teaching. So again, it's imperative to understand and differentiate that the word Torah does not mean law. We have a different word for law. It's similar to the Arabic word deen. In Hebrew, it's dan. Exactly. As a matter of fact, one of the tribes, 12 tribes of Israel, is a tribe by the name of Dan. And the word Dan literally means to judge, and it also means law. But when you want to say law in Hebrew, you're not saying Torah, because Torah literally means to teach. So it's better sheep, bara, Elohim, et hashemaim, et haaretz. Now let me say something really quick and show you too since we have a screen up. I'm going to count the letters really quick for you. Number one, I'll count the words. That's one word. That's two words. That's three words. That's four words. That's five words. That's six words. There's seven words. If anyone knows, I can't open a second page right now because I don't have to tell them time. But Exodus chapter uh, 20, verse 1 begins exactly the same. If anyone knows Torah, knows the Bible, or think they know it, Exodus chapter 20 begins with the words that God spoke all these words saying, and then the Ten Commandments are shared. In Hebrew it's, Why Dabir Elohim et Kal Hadebarim Ha'elein and more. And God spoke all these words saying. That chapter also has seven words, and now we'll see 28 letters. And I'll give you the significance of why it has 28 letters just now. One letter, two, three, four, five, six. 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Seven words in 28 minutes. Hmm. What, is, what is significant about that? Why did I waste the first 10 minutes of my time speaking mm -hmm. about that alone? Am I going to convey something that's true? You're damn right. <laughs> pick up your hands, if you will. Everybody. Just pick up your hands. Hold the palm of your hands real quick. How many joints do you have on each finger? Three. Your joint is what makes your fingers better. You should have three joints on your four fingers and one, two joints on your thumb. Correct? Yes. How much is that? 